Welcome to our newest Path of Exile video guide. This is a truly experimental chain hook berserker setup, which actually ended up being totally playable. Chain hook is not your typical attack. First of, it requires you to aim precisely at the enemy for it to work, regardless of your area of effect, and then, after a quick dash, it deals damage. The damaging area has a shape of a cone which is actually pretty large, it can reach the edge of your screen easily. It's a good skill to quickly generate rage and move around while attacking, but overall it's too clunky and weak to be considered a powerful endgame build. It's more proof of the concept that all attacks work well on a berserker. It's a physical berserker build that's getting a lot of rage quickly. As the attack generates rage, we've decided to pick Crave the Slaughter and Rite of Ruin to get more rage faster, and with triple effect. With 80 Rage, which is rather easy to get, it will get you 240% increased damage, 120% increased attack speed, and 48% increased movement speed. With Berserk active, it will shred most bosses in no time if you've entered their area with a lot of rage already, and if not, it will be generated in mere seconds. For even more damage, we've selected Flawless Savagery and Blitz for more added damage, attack speed, and critical strike modifiers. Chain Hook doubles as a movement attack, as long as there is an enemy you can aim for. A distinctive quality of this attack is its rage generation, unrestricted 1 per hit. The effectiveness of the damage and attack speed multiplier are not exceptionally good, at around the same level as Infernal Blow. For defenses, it uses basic armor, block chance, fortify, and a lot of life and life leech. We recommend using the Brass Dome chest piece for much more improved elemental resistance. With the abundance of rare items, it should be easy to cap chaos resistance and get some spell suppression. Gameplay wise, it can be compared to a shield charge, but you have to aim for enemies. It's bad. Single target damage is great as long as you have a good weapon. The build can run only on rare items, these perform exceptionally well and oftentimes are the best in slot if you want to min max DPS. The price varies from low to high. As stated a second ago, a well-balanced build can use only rare items, but it's always good to add one or two unique ones which can significantly improve a build. A few unique items are the best for their job when you need an especially defensive option, like a brass dome, or an offensive one such as the Abyssus helmet. Abyssus is the soft core option that grants more damage than any other helmet could provide, but increases the physical damage taken by your character too. Paradoxica can roll some great mods for increased physical damage and attack speed, and then double the damage. A good Paradoxica is however very expensive. Feral's Fur is a reliable source of power and frenzy charges but requires a cat's buff on one of your other items, which can be crafted. It's overall a very good armor for most attack builds. The Brass Dome is an extremely defensive-oriented chest with a lot of armor and maximum elemental resistances. It slightly lowers your maximum life, but it's still very good. With enough life leech you can safely use Kaom Spirit to gain even more rage, but combined with Blood Rage it may be just too much a life drain. Oskarm will trigger Assassin's Mark against tough enemies, provide a significant portion of accuracy, and some extra critical strike chance. Good if corrupted or with a lot of accuracy. Azanath's Gentle Touch Gloves are known for exploding enemies on death, resulting in a much better clear speed. It inflicts Temporal Chain Curse on hit, but at the end of the day can be swapped for Aureus End Flask or Rare Chest Modifier to cause these explosions. Ricelatha's Coil is exceptionally good for all physical attack builds, it grants a lot of damage and maximum life, but no resistances. Bear's Girdle adds 20 maximum rage, increases damage per rage, crushes enemies, and adds physical damage to attacks. It's extremely good if you can generate rage rapidly, which you should be able to. The build could really benefit from an extra 7th support gem. Try to get an Yule Nettle's Vow Amulet with good rolls. If socketed near Savagery, Thread of Hope with a large ring allows you to pick up Master of the Arena, Art of the Gladiator, Deflection, Panopticon, Hatchet Master, Rampart, or even Spirit Void if needed. Marauder is known to have many excellent keystones you can allocate via a pair of Forbidden Jewels. 
The aspect of carnage, Tukahama, undeniable, unstoppable, untiring, unbreakable, indomitable resolve, or the already selected blitz and right of ruin are all good. Your auras are pride, determination, and precision. Try to get a watcher's eye with the affixes for increased critical strike chance or any of the pride mods. In terms of DPS, prioritize your weapon, one-handed mace, scepter, sword, or axe. We've selected axe due to the multiple great axe cluster and masteries near Marauder's starting location. Seek critical strike, accuracy, and attack speed mods. For defenses, maximum life and armor are the most fundamental pieces. Later you can invest more in block chance, spell suppression, life regeneration, and chaos resistance. The helmet can be a source of maximum life, resistances, accuracy, attributes, critical strike modifiers, and increased physical damage taken by nearby enemies. A weapon with increased and added physical damage and attack speed should result in around 500 total physical DPS. Psychotic axe for more rage would be excellent. Block chance, tons of life, and resistances are the most optimal mods to get on a shield. There's also a shaper's suffix to increase mana reservation efficiency for socketed gems, might be useful. Besides maximum life and elemental resistances, on a body armor aim for added critical strike chance for attacks, or an additional curse. Explosions would help with clear speed. We recommend a pair of boots with elemental resistances, movement speed, maximum life, and some additional offensive mods. Gloves. Maximum life and resistances are a must-have. You can then additionally get attack speed, accuracy, or use eldritch currency to generate rage on hit. Corrupted gloves can apply a vulnerability curse on hit. Stygian vice with just life and resistances will do, there you can get a lot of them if needed. Life, resistances, and critical strike modifiers are very common on an amulet, it should be easy to get. Mana reservation efficiency for specific auras can be found on Warlord's amulets. On rings, we recommend gathering a lot of dexterity and intelligence, maximum life, and resistances. Accuracy, critical strike modifiers, mana leech, and reduced mana cost of skills would work well too. You can fix your elemental resistances and attributes if needed, but try to always prioritize maximum life on your jewels. Regular large cluster jewel with a base of attack damage or physical damage should have some great notable passives for the build. We recommend just one. Critical strike notables from medium cluster jewels would greatly improve the build in terms of damage. There are two good unique flasks you can use. Lion's Roar can improve any melee physical build, it grants more damage and armor. Bottled Faith is used for more damage, critical strike chance, and the bonuses of consecrated ground. For other flasks get a life one with instant life recovery on use, a diamond flask, and a quicksilver or silver one if you can't get onslaught any other way. These would increase your attack speed and critical strike chance, or remove bleed or freeze on use. Chain Hook is a melee attack that makes you dash to the targeted enemy dealing area damage as you land. It generates rage with each successful hit. Link it with Impale, melee physical damage, brutality, pulverize, and multi-strike. You can switch pulverize for increased critical strikes or increased critical damage for better single target damage. Attacking twice each time might be too awkward. If that's the case, use rage or faster attack support, instead of multi-strike. For auras we recommend precision as it adds accuracy rating and increases critical strike chance, both are useful. Enemies near you take increased physical damage when using pride, the effect is doubled after 4 seconds of continuous exposure. Determination adds and increases armor, the primary defensive layer. Link them with enlightened support, it increases mana reservation efficiency. You may not need it at all if you've allocated champion of the cause, or have a shield with local reservation efficiency. Phase Run grants more damage, movement speed, and phasing for a brief moment, it lasts longer for each frenzy charge consumed. Use it as your movement key. Assassin's Mark is a curse that increases your critical strike chance and damage against the marked enemy. 
Link these with life tap so as to not spend any mana but life on them, and mark on hit support. Assassin's Mark will apply to all rare and unique enemies you hit with any of your attacks. Ancestral Warchief grants you more melee damage. Ancestral Protector grants more attack speed. We recommend the Phantasmal version of it. Link them with multiple totem support to place both totems at the same time for two of the ancestral buffs. With maim support, attacks have a chance to maim on hit. The maimed enemy will receive increased physical damage from all sources. Berserk consumes all your rage to grant a temporary bonus to attack speed, attack damage, movement speed, and less damage taken. The more rage you have, the longer it lasts. Blood Rage increases attack speed, life leech, and generates frenzy charges on kill while draining your life. Its duration is refreshed on kill. Link them both to enhance support for an increased quality, which results in more DPS. Use Molten Shell to mitigate incoming hit damage for a brief time. Link it with Cast when damage taken, Molten Shell will be activated automatically after taking damage. You should be able to fit in a spell or two that reserves little to no mana. War Banner increases accuracy and damage nearby enemies take. Blood and Sand can be used too, it grants more AoE or more area damage, depending on stance. Killing all the bandits in Act 2 is undoubtedly the best option, it will get you two extra passive skill points. Soul of Lunaris would be the best for overall performance, it protects you from projectiles and improves survivability in crowded areas. Boss fights should be easy due to the Berserk skill. If you struggle with DOT and Chaos damage, pick Arakali instead. For a minor god, you can once more pick something to reduce damage over time. Soul of Ralakesh is good against Bleeding Damage, Shikari Poison, and Aberath, Ignite. It depends on your flasks and the type of content you're up against. In the passive skill tree, we've selected the most basic attack and life nodes. If you've played any physical damage berserk build before, you should be familiar with it. In this case, we've used an axe, but there are two or three good sword clusters within the same range if you prefer them. For masteries, we recommend precision reservation efficiency as accuracy mastery, determination reservation efficiency as armor mastery, two maximum life masteries for more maximum life, Fortify Mastery for Fortify on hit. Axe Mastery to gain 1 rage per hit every second. Chance to Impale as Physical Mastery, and Critical Strike Mastery for more Critical Strike Multiplier against unique enemies. Remember to get Berserking Notable for more rage, and the remaining 40% chance to Impale on hit. And that's it. A very simple build. If you have any questions leave them down below. Thank you for watching, stay safe.